One more. Good morning, John Radway with Legacy Dynamics. I do everything from assistant strategic planning, mentoring, and coaching. And uh, in addition to that, I'm a part time development director for the Messiah Foundation. And you didn't want to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to start while. While he go, once goes to get his donut, please help yourself to the donuts, coffee. There's water back there if you're not a coffee drinker. Since we have a few new folks here today, if you're not getting our Monday newsletter that announces the speaker for the week, please let me know before you go or give me your business card and I would be delighted to add you to the email list. With that, I'm delighted to uh, introduce our speaker, Dave Majorans with Majorans Corp. I've known Dave for a long time. Um, from the same church, and I can tell you that he's a very sharp guy and has some interesting stories to tell. So Dave, please take it away. All right, thank you, Steve. Is that uh, microphone working okay? All right. Um, yeah, thanks for that. And so today, um, there's so many things I could talk about. Well, what I want to talk about uh, is, is, is potential, but a particular type of potential. And actually, it's the potential that is in this room. I'm going to call it entrepreneurial potential. It's a special type of potential because, believe it or not, if you are an entrepreneur, and you are because you're in this room, um, not everybody is an entrepreneur. So it's a particular way of going about life. And so what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship certainly is about innovation. Entrepreneurship is about finding a need and filling it. Entrepreneurship is about identifying a problem and merging that with some type of solution. Entrepreneurship is about starting and running your own business. But at its core, entrepreneurship is all of those things, but at its core, actually entrepreneurship is a way of thinking. It's who you are. You can't get away from yourself. So it's a way you approach all of life. It's the way that if you, pro you problem solve, identify needs and solutions. So as I said earlier, it's a, it's, a, it's a specialty thing. Not everybody is an entrepreneur. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of approaching life. And so you bring that into your business. So I want to talk about entrepreneurial potential. But before I get into that, I want to just talk a little bit about myself to give you a little bit of background so you know my history and why I'm even up here talking about this topic today. Some of you in the room know me, some of you have no idea who I am. So I'm gonna give you sort of a Cliff Notes version and just run over uh, a bunch of stuff here. But I'm a serial entrepreneur, 35 years ago, I did what a lot of uh, teenage kids do. I, I, I got a lawnmower and I started mowing lawns. But something different happened to me when I started doing that. And this is this my journey as an entrepreneur is a journey of transitions and a journey of figuring out who I am. And so there was something that intrigued me about that, not so much mowing the lawn, it was selling the job and following up and sending invoices and receiving money and then getting more more lawn, and then another mower, and then another truck. And I didn't know I was an entrepreneur, I just liked this. And so I thought, well, this is what I'm gonna do. I like the freedom of it, I like all the things that go with it. And so that thing grew, and so pretty soon, you know, I have four trucks, and I have people helping me, and we could talk about, well, how can we increase revenue? So maybe we ought to have a chemical program, and maybe we ought to do power raking, and maybe we ought to do all of that stuff. And so that thing grew. And then more years pass and it grows into this landscape management company because why don't we build some retaining walls? Why don't we sod some yards? Why don't we keep increasing our revenue? And so then that grew. And then pretty soon that kind of transitioned into what we called a landscape restoration company. Now I'm 17, 18 years into this entrepreneurial journey. I'm learning about myself. One thing kind of transitions into the other, but we take on a contract with some major utilities here in town. They're tearing up everybody's yard, installing uh, fiber optics. Maybe some of you remember that years ago, but I got that contract to restore all the landscapes. And so now we have seven crews and seven trucks and 22 employees, and we're putting back together everybody's yard in Lincoln, Nebraska. And so there's a lot of good and bad and high stress and low stress, a lot of stuff that comes with that, but that's part of the entrepreneurial journey. And so um, then something comes along with that. It's like, well, you know, I got to keep some of my, my, my staff. You know, employees, they like two things. They like 
They like a regular paycheck and they like to be employed year round. And so when you have a landscape company, it's hard to keep them employed year round. So then I came up with this other innovative thing, a way of approaching life. It's like, I, I went into this joint venture with another contractor friend of mine, and we took on this idea of uh, restoring apartment complexes. So if we can restore landscapes, why, so it would be winter work. It would keep my guys busy, December, January, February, and then we'd start back up. But then another interesting thing happened. As we got into that, we started restoring apartment complexes and rehabbing the units and getting them ready for the renters and all of that. My partner decided to do something else and he leaves town and so this joint venture kind of falls apart and I have a decision. It's like, well, what do I do? This thing's pretty good. We have a lot of work. And so I buy the contract out and I take it over and I employ some more people and we get so busy with that, that turns into a year round thing. We're just rehabbing apartments. And so I had to lay down the landscaping part of it and it transitioned into just re rehabbing apartments. Well, actually, now fast forward real quick. That 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 uh, actually, I'm still part owner of that business today. That business is uh, it's a very specialty cleaning business. We clean apartment complexes and new construction. We get it ready for the tenant to move in. We have that business today. For the last four years, I've been transferring ownership of that business uh, to my son. He's a great entrepreneur in and of himself. He's got all of these ideas. He's renamed it. He's rebranding it. I hope to have him here in a couple months. I want him to come and just tell the story about that. That's a great story in and of itself. But four years ago, I started that, and he's taking it over. And I started a new business, this business of coaching and consulting, because I wanted to work with other entrepreneurs and kind of help them with their journey. Also, during this 35 years of this serial entrepreneurial journey, I actually have had two jobs. I've been employed two times, one time for five years, one time for seven years. During those 12 years, I never laid down my business. I mean, we didn't have 22 employees, but I had one employee and I kind of kept it going. One time I actually went on staff for a large investment uh, property owner here and I worked with his apartments and kind of helped to, to maintain and to, to turn over these apartments but on, on staff with him and then that thing grew in. One day I had an offer and I put my hat in the ring and they accepted it but I started to, I went to work for a large nonprofit here in town. It's a church and a school and uh, they needed some help with their facilities and so that was my background and my business and all that so I came on board and I started helping with the, the funding and the facilities and the contracts and all of that stuff. But that thing transitioned and it grew into quite a position because there was a gap there. There's a lot of business things that were not being taken care of and my, biz my background in business and all of that. I mean, this, this is a church and a school combination. There's 42 people on staff. And so you can imagine there's a lot of business stuff going on. And so that advanced into the business director position. And when I left that organization, um, I mean, there's pastors and there's principals and there's teachers and there's kitchen help and all of the personnel issues and the financing and the money and all of that in one way or another came across my desk. But in that journey, I discovered even that, that that's not who I really am. I have this bend in me to have the freedom of my own enterprise and the flexibility and I've got to get back out there. And so that's a story in and of itself. But I went back out into business with my son and we beamed it back up and we kind of got this going. And so he's taking that over. And so today, what am I? What am I talking about today? Today I'm a development coach. Four years ago, I went and got some training about how to actually be a coach. Went through some schooling, uh, got some credentials through the International Coaching Federation. So they put your stamp of approval on you and say you have a credential, you know how to listen, you know how to ask powerful questions, all that kind of stuff. I went through some very specific training about how to administer some assessments because they so impacted my journey as an entrepreneur. I wanted to be able to help other entrepreneurs with those. So I went to Gallup and MCOR and Myers Briggs and I got that, that, that kind of training. And so today I stand here and I'm building this business that I started four years ago to help other entrepreneurial builders build whatever you're building, but in alignment with who you really are so that you truly can maximize your unique potential. Potential is unique and you have unique potential and we have that term maximize. What does that mean? You actually can maximize what it is you do, your potential. What is potential? Potential is possibility. Another dictionary defines it as that which is capable of becoming. Because you're an entrepreneur, because you approach all of life that way, you're capable of becoming something even more, something greater through your entrepreneurial bend, the way that you see the world. And so that's potential. 
but it's about building that potential. I want you today to think with me for a minute, though, about potential as a, as a big, beautiful structure, a house, a building, a skyscraper. Get a picture in your mind of a structure. And that whole beautiful structure is the potential, your potential. But a structure, a building has different pieces to it, different parts to it. And so as a coach, I help you take those parts apart and build it around your unique enterprise, whatever it is you're doing. Think of the roof, the, the upper structure. Think of that as your business plan. You have to have a business plan. A business plan answers kind of your who, what, where, when, why, and how. And you gotta kind of know that about your enterprise. But that's the plan. The plan is actually held up and supported by what I call the four pillars of entrepreneurial potential. It's my way of just trying to present to my clients and to audiences about a simple way to remember there's a lot of help and a lot of talk about, we hear about, you know, mission and vision and values and goals and objectives and you need this and you gotta have a mission statement, you gotta have a vision statement. So we do that and we go to seminars and classes and we write our statements and one, one uh, author will tell us it's got to be long. The next one says it's got to be short. And, and then we write a vision at another workshop and it ends up being our mission. But then our mission, our vision, then we're kind of confused. Like, we, what, what does all of that mean? And then, we write, and then we throw that binder on a shelf and we don't really get it down and read it again. We don't apply it to our business because it's a little complicated. But actually, it's not. You need all of that stuff. You have to have a mission and a vision and values and goals and objectives. You got to have all that. But my way to help you remember that in sort of a simple way to put it together is the four pillars. I'm going to call them passion, purpose, picture, and principles. You have to have passion. You have to have passion. That's your energy that drives your business. You have to care about what you're doing. You can do anything you want to do for a little while. But ultimately, to keep going for the long haul, you have to have a deep passion for whatever it is that you're doing. I could talk all morning just about passion, but I'm going to keep moving. The next one is purpose. Purpose is your mission. Very simple, very simple statement. Why do you exist? Just write a sentence on a paper. The name of my business exists to blank. That's your purpose. That's your mission. That's why you're here. And if you just write in to make money, that's okay. You have to make money or you can't keep going as a business person. But if that's all you write in there, that's also going to get tough for the long haul because it has to be deeper than that. You exist for some reason, for some purpose. That's your unique potential. So write that out. And then picture is vision. Vision is what it sounds like. It's what you see. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. I'm here to tell you, today to tell you without vision your business will perish. But I'm going to call it picture because your vision is what you see. It's a picture of where you're going. It's how you will carry out your purpose. In three to five years, what does a picture of your life and your business look like? If you have no picture, you probably will get there. If you have a picture, you'll probably get there. Think about that. And then the last thing is principle. That's your value. What do you value no matter what? Because sometimes business is easy. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you have a lot of money. Sometimes you're close to bankruptcy. But no matter what, when things come up, how you treat others, how you get clients, when there's gray ethical areas, when you have to hire somebody, when you have to fire somebody, what will guide you no matter what? Put that on a note card, three to five things, bullet points. These things I will stand by no matter what. They're my values, they're my principles. So those are the four pillars, passion, purpose, picture, and principles. But those four pillars, we're talking about the structure now, they stand on the bedrock of what I'm gonna call a foundation. The most beautiful buildings, the most beautiful skyscrapers have a deep, solid foundation. In fact, if you don't, what you see in all that beauty will fall over and it won't go for the long haul if it doesn't have a deep foundation. I'm gonna call the foundation of this structure your personal profile. It's who you are. And who you are is unique. There's seven billion people on Earth and this is not my opinion, but it's scientifically proven that there's nobody exactly like you. That means your potential is pretty unique. But wouldn't it be great to know 
who you are. And so that's the foundation. The foundation drives the pillars and the plan and all that. And there's four principal parts to that foundation. Who you are drives how you will do whatever it is you're doing. So it's important to know who you are because whether you know it or don't know it, it's kind of like the law of gravity. You can not know about the law of gravity, but it's still there. It's holding you down. It's just a law bigger than all of it. It's just the law of gravity. Who you are is who you are. And it is driving everything you're doing, whether you know it or not. So whether would it be better to know it? So there's four principal parts to your personal profile. There's hundreds of assessments out there read a lot about it, researched more than that 35 years, a lot of them, but there's four major components that I've discovered for the human being and this is what I help my clients with. It's your talents, it's your strengths, it's your personality, and it's your motivations. So first of all, I work with somebody to figure out what your talents are. I'm a, I'm a trained through the Gallup organization that actually used to own and meet in this building years and years ago. But uh, they, it's a BP tran, BP10 training. It's entrepreneurial talent. Gallup does what they do best. They studied entrepreneurs, thousands of them, for the last five years all around the world in different cultures, and they came up scientific research to say there's 10 in eight innate entrepreneurial talents that entrepreneurs possess. And each of them, each of us, have all 10 of those. You need all 10 of them if you're going to have a successful enterprise. But if you take this assessment and apply it, actually three of those kind of rise to the top. That's what you're really strong at. And it's good to know that because you can capitalize on that and maybe fill in the gaps with some other people what you're low at. Gallup also says in there's three entrepreneurial roles in all the research of all the businesses, small businesses to large businesses. There's three distinct roles. One that of being an expert, a rainmaker, or a conductor. And it's the combination of your talents, and you are one of those. If you're a small business, if you're a solopreneur here today, you probably are doing all three of those because you have to. But you are the best at one of those. And if you figure out which one that is, and you capitalize on that, and then shore up your gaps with other associates, you can build a stronger enterprise. So it's good to know that. So your talent. Talent is how you do whatever you're doing every day. And entrepreneurial talent is specific to building a business, an entrepreneurial builder. The next thing is strengths. It's another Gallup uh, uh, the thing, and they've been doing this for years, but there's 34 strengths. Maybe many of you have taken the Gallup Strengths Assessment. Maybe you've thrown that binder up on the shelf and you thought that was interesting information, but I don't know what to do with it. As a coach, I work with people to help you really there's so much information in that, if you would apply it, it would transform your business, your life, your marriage, your relationship, because it, you're, you're wired a certain way. Your strengths are how you do life every day. There's conventional wisdom out there that says, figure out what you're not good at, figure out what you're weak at, and make it better. Gallup says, don't do that. Life is not long enough. Figure out what you're weak at and manage that, but figure out what you're strong at, your natural reoccurring patterns of thinking and the way you do it, and capitalize on that because that's enough to build a great potential in whatever it is you're doing. Figure out your strengths. So your talents, your strengths. The next thing is your personality. I use a Myers-Briggs assessment to go through with my clients. Are you introverted or are you extroverted? It's important to know that because it's about energy. If you're introverted, do you know that you're re-energized differently than an extrovert? And there's ways that that actually happens. Wouldn't it be good to know that? Because if you're building an enterprise or building a life, you have to have energy. Even if you know your talents and your strengths, you have to have energy. So your energy comes from your personality and how you recharge your batteries, how you work. And then the last thing that underlines those three principles are uh, motivations. And so I'm a certified as an MCOR motivational coach, and I, there's 27 main motivations. We hear things out there like, you know, I want to hire somebody that's really motivated, or I want to ha hang out with motivated people, or that person's really motivated, that person's not. Actually, the SEMA Corporation that invented the MCOR assessment, they have 50 years of empirical research around the globe, millions of people, to say everybody 
is motivated in one way or another. You just have to know how you're motivated. If you have a big business, how are the people on your team motivated? You can actually know that through an assessment. There's 27 main motivations. And why motivations are important? Because motivations are why. They're why you do what you do every time you do it. Wherever you go, there you are. You can't get away from yourself. You will do what you do in a certain way, so why not know that? Motivations are why. I have you tell a story from when you were a kid of when you did something really successful and had energy, maybe a story from later in life, and I'll have you tell a story from last week when you did something that was successful and energized. And then I'll have you answer some questions about each of those stories, and the computer will dump it all together, and it will show you a theme of what you did when as you were a kid and you were successful and full of energy, and the decision you made and why you did that is exactly why you did what you did in a different circumstance last week. It's hardwired into your unique ability, your unique DNA. There's seven billion people on Earth, and we're all wired differently, and yours is unique. There's motivation. Wouldn't it be good to know that? Because if you're building an enterprise, you're going to do what you're going to do. So your talents, your strengths, your personality, your motivations, they build your personal profile. It's who you are. That's the foundation. And then the four pillars of passion, purpose, picture, and principle stand on that foundation, and then they hold up your business plan, which is what you're going to do. But so many entrepreneurs spend a lot of time on that plan, which is vitally important, but there's nothing underneath the plan to keep you going for the long haul. So I work with entrepreneurs to get that whole structure of that beautiful thing we call potential. The whole thing is potential. So I'm going to bring this to a close. I want you to remember three things, and then we'll allow for some questions and so forth. Um, first of all, I'd love to, I love to talk about this stuff. I'm trying to actually condense just a lot of things down to 15 minutes here. But when I work with somebody individually, this takes months to figure out. And so there's some different ways that I do that. If you're interested in that, if you just want to know more depth about what I talked about, because I just moved through that this morning. I would love to have coffee with anybody. We, I can hang around today and talk about it a little bit, and I can answer questions. But if you want to really dig in and talk about what I'm talking about, I would love to get to know you and your enterprise and what it is you're building. And then we could see how this stuff all works together. So, so keep that in mind. I have my business cards back there with the donuts that I bought. There's my contact information on there. Pick up a card, take it with you. Maybe contact me down the road if you don't get to talk to me today. But remember these three things as I close this down. Number one, find out who you are before you try the next thing. Number two, build whatever you're going to build in alignment with who you really are so that you truly can maximize your unique potential. And then the last thing, just remember, who you are is who you are. But who you are is enough to change the world. Your potential is unique. So those are some thoughts I wanted to share this morning about just the topic of potential, a little bit about my business, a little bit about my past. I'd love to entertain any questions or comments. Yes? Okay, now you said you work with uh And the old days of starting a company and the kids taking it over and the grandkids and that sort of thing seemed to be the path. The Roper and Sons model is not done. And a lot of your serial entrepreneurs today, the idea is to start something, build it, sell it, do it again. Build it, sell it, do it again. And that's what how they view themselves as serial entrepreneurs. How do you feel about that? That's true. It feeds into what I'm talking about. If I would sit down and had the opportunity to do a personal profile and assessment of that type of entrepreneur, they would be driven by profit and selling, which are all good things. They're driven by that, and they wouldn't want to know that. So that is a mode in today's modern era of entrepreneurship. Start up, build it, sell it. But not every entrepreneur 
approaches things that way. There are solo entrepreneurs. There's entrepreneurs of small businesses. There's entrepreneurs in large corporations. There's intrapreneurs. That means it's not your own thing, but you're sort of entrepreneurial, but you work within an organization. So that is a type of entrepreneurship. There's nothing wrong with it, but the old model exists also. I'm an example of that. So I have this 35 year business that transitioned into other things. As I got excited about this coaching thing and started training and started getting clients and all that, I was gonna kind of shut that business down or sell it or whatever. But my son, I do some a profile on him and I see who he is and he's been working with us since he's 14 years old and he's entrepreneurial and he loves business and that's a talent. Sometimes we find talent in, you know, who's the best soccer player, the football player, the music person. Those are all talents, but we don't search for entrepreneurial talent. And entrepreneurial talent can change the world. And so I discover my son has this entrepreneurial talent. He wants to build a restaurant. He loves cooking and all that. But he's also working for us. And one day he says, you know, why would I start all over with nothing? We have these established clients and we have revenue and we have customers and we have vans and we have employees. Maybe I could just take this thing over. And when he said that, it's like, we're going to do that. We're going to transition the ownership. So to answer your questions, both things happen. There's businesses being transferred. There's a startup, and that's a big thing. Just start it, build it, sell it. But that's a particular type of entrepreneur. Wouldn't you want to know which type you are so that you know how to approach whatever it is you're going to approach? I hope that answers it. What challenges have you had, Dave, since you transitioned out of um, your cleaning business into a coaching business? What are the major obstacles you've encountered and how have you dealt with those? Because that's a pretty dramatic shift. It, it is a pretty dramatic shift, and that's a great question because it's all entrepreneurship, it's all business, but it's very different. So here I have a service-driven business. There's product businesses. Some of us have a product. There's a service business. The cleaning business is a service business. And then there's just sort of this, this content, this information business, which is coaching and consulting and this education business. Ultimately, that feeds into the passion. What are you really passionate about? My, I love business. I love entrepreneurship. My passion is to help other entrepreneurs. Could I start a business that actually helps others, but I could also monetize it? And so the challenges are, well, here it's pretty clear. It's like I uh, get clients and we clean their apartments and we hire people and we monetize it. We send out invoices and that's how you monetize it. And you got to market it and do all this other stuff. But the challenge is, well, I'm a coach. A lot of people stand up today and say, I'm a coach or I'm a consultant or whatever. Well, what does that mean? And how do you get a client? And so what I've learned and the challenges over the last four years is you do have to get some training. You do have to build your credibility. So I do that, that learning, merge it with my experience. But then it's all about how do you get a client? Because it isn't just I go knock on the door and say, hey, do you want to be coached? Hey, do you want to be coached? Because half the people don't even know what that is. And, uh, and then there's misrepresentations of what that is. And so, Steve, it's a great question, and that's what I'm building today is one by one by one, what I have figured out is I'm passionate about it, I can really help, I have some testimonials of people I have helped, and so I just go out and I spread my message, and it seems like I somehow connect with the next client. But it's not just go out there and get a bunch of clients in the cleaning business, it's one at a time, and that is different than what I've done in the past. I don't know if that answers it completely. Could you go in a little more detail on how you get a client? Yes, and then I'll take the question in the back. Oh, um, just bounce off of that? Yes. So the other businesses that you ran were very straightforward in the sense of how to make money. Mm -hmm. This seems way more complicated and way more difficult to make money. It's more, you seem more passionate about it. You seem like you were very, I wouldn't say you were money driven before, but most of the businesses were based off the fact that each one was going to have recurring revenue and you were going to find new ways to make more money. This seems to be the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, in a way, it's the exact opposite, but it's not. I uh, actually, in one of your towns, one of the towns is profitability. Some people are really good at the whole money thing. Surprisingly, that's low in my talents. I, I'm driven by 
purpose and passion and all that. I have to surround myself with some profitability people that advise me and help me with all of that. Um, but, but I see what that looks like on the surface. And so it is a different, and to Steve's point too, it's, it's, a, it's a different animal because how do you do it? How do you go about it? And maybe I'll get into answering your, your question at the same time because it's not driven by money, but I know that there's lots of coaches and consultants out there that massively monetize what it is they do. And so it brings me back to my whole talk about the unique potential. What I have figured out in the last four years, and now I'm just really starting to launch it because I, I kind of have this bedrock foundation in place, is it's all about getting a client. So how do you do that? And you can't get a client, it's very, I shouldn't say can't because some coaches do, but it's very hard to just get the business or get the client if you are not absolutely clear what it is you do, what it is you offer, and what your ideal client looks like. Because if you figure that out, who you are and who your client is, and many times your client is a lot like you. That's an odd thing that you will discover. But then you're driven by your passion. And that client, the best way I can answer that question is how do you get a client, and it's a very different thing. It answers both questions at the same time. Is the best way I can answer that is if you figure those things out, who you are, what you're passionate about, and what your ideal client really is, that client will find you. So I don't have a big booming coaching business like the other businesses I've, I've started, but the potential that I see now that I figure this out and the few clients that I've gotten over the last four years, I see the potential for lots of clients because of my message and what I'm passionate about and what I truly can help people with. And so, um, I had another thought with that uh, th th that, I, that I lost. But does that help it a, a little bit? It's, it, it's, I, I understand your question, and that's, that's the uniqueness of building a, 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 an, a, an education-type business like this. Um, oh, I know what I was going to say. This applies to the coaching business to answer these two questions, but it applies to whatever it is you're building to you. And this is in that whole plan thing. And there's a lot of business consultants out there that can help you with the plan. I can help you get started on that, but a lot of times I refer you to somebody. I mean, there's a lot of great resources here at the Entrepreneurial Center, workshops, and you know, help you with marketing and business plans and all that. But, but one key thing that you gotta be part of your business plan, whether you're a solopreneur trying to just get a consulting business going or coaching business or where you have a big business is answer the question very clearly, write it down somewhere, but I help who do what so that they can fill in those blanks. It's different for everybody in the room. That's it, but I help who do what so that they can what? If you do that and get clear on your message and then present your message in every opportunity you have to present your message, your client will be attracted to you. I hope that helps a little bit with that question. Last question. So, um, it seems like you know, you're know you very open to change and how do you balance being open to change with maintaining focus and not just you know chasing whatever Oh, man, that, that's a great question. Because by nature, because we're entrepreneurial thinkers, we have a lot of passions and we have a lot of things we want to pursue. We do more things by noon than most people do all week long because we're entrepreneurs. We have a lot of passions. And sometimes we're like a water bug and we're scattering here to there to there and I'll try a little there and try a little bit there. And then they got this speaker that talks about passion I got to identify. Well, I got a lot of that. Well, as a coach, I sit down and I help you. I've had to do this for myself. I've had to have a lot of coaches pour into my life. But I help you figure out what your primary passion is. And then we have what we call a focus funnel. And we put that down and it's a big funnel on a piece of paper. We put everything in the funnel that you ever think about that you want to do but we focus it down on one. 
And then the other side of that funnel is we have tracking sheets, we have an achieve action planner, so you stay on track with what it is you said that you want to focus on. You check in and you're accountable with your coach so that you stay on track with that. You come back, you table things, you don't ever give up on any of your ideas, because your idea, one of your great ideas is still sitting in that funnel, but you, you table them for a while and you focus and you work with an accountability group to stay focused, because all of us have that. Actually, when you do these assessments, one of the Gallup strengths is that of focus. That's a whole thing in and of itself. That's actually a strength. And some people have it in their top five. That means you won't struggle as much with it because you're a very focused person. But some people have it on their 34th place. You gotta know that, because if you are low in focus by nature, by the way your DNA is, you're going to have to have some different tactics in place so that you remain focused. So the best answer to your question is, we have to stay focused, but it's back to who you are. How you stay focused and how you stay on track is going to be driven by your DNA. John. Doesn't creating that vision plan as you're going forward with your business and having that up Focusing on that really helps keep you on track. That's a great point, John, and John can massively help you with this. But that picture, I'm calling it a picture, but the traditional world calls it a vision. That's why you have to have that, because it feeds into that focus. If you don't have that, that's the most unfocused entrepreneur, jumping here to here to here, water bug, and because that's who we are by nature. But if you have that, that vision, that picture, it's like this giant magnet out there and you're being pulled toward that magnet. And if you get off track a little bit and you're working with a coach, it'll help you get back onto that track so that magnet, you keep going towards that picture because that's what you're building. Great point, John, because that's what provides the clarity. If you don't know where you're going, you're probably going to get there. All right, Dave, thank you so much. We yeah, really you Thank you. We'd like to present you with a Focus Suite mug. And I'm going to get one for your wife, too, because if she's the office manager, she's doing three quarters of the work anyway. Oh, man. Yeah. Talk about yeah, focus. Between, yeah. between Zach and I and two businesses, I mean, we would not be focused if it wasn't for Wendy, who keeps all of this payroll and finances and bills and billing on track. So, <laughs> That's yeah, right. she's awesome. But thank you. It's obvious that he's got the passion part of the equation down. So thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Please join us next week for Kat and Brooke on their presentation.